All right, this is going to be a slightly more, a slightly longer video and slightly more advanced. Um, it's not going to be quite a walkthrough solve. I'm not going to you know, explain everything what I do. I'm just going to go through the thought process, my thought process for big cube edges. Um, I picked six by six because it's sort of a good middle ground between the five by five and the seven by seven. Um, so uh, edges really start when you're doing your last commutator, I guess. Um, you can try and preserve some edges before that, but I generally tend not to. But uh, you know, you're executing your last commutator. While you, whilst you're doing that, you should be looking ahead as to uh, what is what your first edge is going to be. So be even before I execute this, I see these two and this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute that, um, and then just set these two up. And then what I'm going to do is find the next one, and then continue on. So I've I've bookmarked. You know, I'm going to do these two next whilst I was doing that. And I notice there's no white oranges anywhere here. So I'm going to flip it over and then the other two are on the other side. And whilst I was doing that, I noticed these, uh, the green and white were paired up and this one here as well. And I've also worked out that the green and white is not here. So I'm going to flip it over again and continue on with that. And I've noticed these two in the back. So I'm going to keep doing that. Flip it over again because it's not there. And this, this gets to a point where, um, well, a lot of people, what they try to do is to store four edges in the top layer. Now that can be good because it uh, actually helps look ahead quite a fair bit, especially if you do four in one layer first, and then flip it over, and then most of your last four edges are gonna be two gen, and you're not gonna have to flip it at all. Um, this, this can be good, um, but it's not completely necessary, uh, especially if you have a good flow going during your edges and you, your look ahead is good and you're not worried at all, I would say don't interrupt that flow and that look ahead and just keep storing the edges wherever you want. Um, so what I would do, even though you've got two on the bottom here, I'm, I see that these two are paired up, so I will store this one on the top as well. And then I would can go on to these red ones, even though there's only two, these two. Now what I might do here is because I know that there's three on the top here, I'd probably store them, uh, I'll store this one up here and because I saw these, the, the green and red and I know the green and red one is there. So I do that and then keep going. Um, we've got the red in the back. And also another thing, um, what I see quite often as well is that after you do your last edge and you've done all your eight edges, a lot of people spend, you know, a good couple of seconds actually realigning their centers to do the last four edges. Whereas what you should be doing is whilst you're, you know, when you're nearly done the last edge, just take a quick note of which way the, the slices need to go so that once you insert it, you can just easily do it without actually, you know, worrying about it too much. Um, so last four edges. So like with uh, like with the centers, it's good to be flexible in how you do your last four edges. So, I mean, some people they prefer to do it, you know, solving the inner two and then the outer ones, or some people just like to freestyle. So if they see something good, um, you would solve it. In this case, this is actually a really bad case. Um, what I would this is actually quite complicated. But what I would do is something like this. So I would take this this edge out and I'm building these yellow and green ones. And then insert this broken edge in there. And then hopefully something comes up for the next ones. No, but what we can do is solve this edge by replacing that and flipping it back. And then this isn't very nice either. That mean it works out. So yeah. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is don't build too many incomplete edges. So sometimes, uh, especially during my solves, I tend to, you know, maybe do three, three edge pieces and then, you know, move on to something else while storing that in the top layer. And I would, you know, take a mental note and try and come back to it later. But I would suggest against that unless, unless there's something, something else really easy comes up and you want to solve that quickly before finishing the last edge, I would, um, I would suggest against, against that because it, uh, it can be quite confusing. So focus on doing one edge at a time whilst you're looking ahead. So don't make anything you know, too complicated for yourself. And also, I know especially sometimes I, you know, I see a whole bunch of different stuff 
a whole bunch of different edges that you know are half solved and they look really good and I try to preserve them. Um, don't be fussed if you can't preserve everything because all you're doing is one solving one edge at a time and whilst you're solving them you know you'll be uh, things will just pop up and hopefully you, you're able to look ahead. So don't be fussed if you can't preserve absolutely you know everything during your edges because that's nearly impossible. Alright, cool.